With a single click of a button, I can easily switch between two different operating machines using the same monitor, same keyboard and mouse and with the same set of speakers. This is a 4K dual display KVM switch docking station from Pulltop that allows two PCs, ideally Windows machines and Mac work as well, but there is a catch to it, we will talk about it in just a second. What this KVM switch does is that it allows both of these machines to share the same two monitors and hence the name dual monitor KVM switch with the same set of peripheral devices connected without having two separate sets of peripherals cluttering up your desk. This KVM switch features one USB-C multi-stream transfer port for Windows only machine that can provide up to 100 watts of power delivery to charge your laptop at the same time. The display connection uses two HDMI 2.0 ports. It has USB-C data input interface for both PC1 and PC2. The KVM switch also features up to three 10 gigabits port where two ports are USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports with a single USB-C port. One of the key features of this KVM switch is the built-in EDID feature, which only takes about three to five seconds to switch between your workstations and seamlessly enjoy two monitors at the same time or entirely eliminating the effort of manually changing input sources from your monitors. How's it going guys? Today we'll be taking a look at this KVM switch from Pulltop. In this video, I want to share with you guys on what a KVM switch is all about. Take a look at everything there is to know about this KVM switch from Pulltop from setting this up for the very first time and my overall experience. And boy, it was messy. As always, disclaimers first, Pulltop did send over this pre-release unit for a review. However, this is not a sponsored video. And Pulltop have no say in whatever that I'll be sharing in this video. Everything I say, it is of my own opinion. And with that out of the way, let's dive right in. So similar to the previous Pulltop Thunderbolt 4 dock, the packaging is rather similar. You have the same branding around the packaging with all of its features and specifications printed on the box itself. Taking a look at inside the box, we are greeted with the dock itself, which we will talk about it in just a second. And under the dock, there are two boxes. Opening the first box have a bunch of cables. Starting from these HDMI cables, there are two that came included in the box. Do note that these cables are used for the connection between the KVM switch and the laptop or desktop and it's not meant to be used with a monitor. Included in the box is also a braided USB-C to USB-C cable and a USB type A to USB-C cable and finally a micro USB switch extender to be placed on your table for quick access of switching in and out. And we have an instruction manual that includes setting this up for the first time and what all the ports are all about. The other box, we have the DC power brick that outputs a maximum of 36 watts to power the KVM switch. And lastly, this is the KVM switching dock right here. Let's start from the front of the KVM switch with the switching power situated at the most left corner with tactile feedback as you can see. Beside it is the micro USB switch extender. Plug this to get a switch dedicated to switch between different machines. Now we have the PC1 and PC2 indicator showing which PC is being selected. Next to it is the USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port that is rated 10 gigabits per second and can charge a device at a maximum of 7.5 watts. Right beside it is a single USB-C port also rated at 10 gigabits per second speeds and supports up to PD 15 watts charging. Next to it is a 3.5 mm TRRS audio interface that supports the left and right output channel, as well as a microphone input. The last two ports right here are for you to connect your peripherals like your mouse and keyboard as indicated by the logos right here. Now, let's take a look at the back of the port. Starting from the right, we have the HDMI out port labeled HDMI 1 4K 60Hz and HDMI 2 4K 60Hz. These ports connect directly to the two monitors respectively and beside it, are the PC1 and PC2 HDMI in ports that you connect from your PC or desktop to these ports right here. Usually we would connect the desktop's HDMI port directly to the monitor but in this case the KVM switch actually sits in between the PC and the monitor like such. Now if you have noticed the labeling PC1 with a darker shade of grey it has two HDMI in which suggests that your desktop highly likely with a GPU that is outputting video signal either HDMI or display port. Still, under PC1, there is a USB-C data port which should be connected from the KVM switch to PC1 to access whatever USB devices that are connected to the KVM switch. 
Now moving on to the other side label under PC2 is this USB-C port which connects a laptop or MacBook via Thunderbolt 3 or 4 for that dual monitor display output. There's also an option for power delivery pass-through for PC2's USB-C port to be able to charge up to a maximum of 100 watts output power if you require it. But you would need an external power adapter that can supply that amount of output power. And all the way to the left is the DC jack right here. It is connected to the charging brake that came included. And that's about all the ports and connection settings that you should be aware of. And there is no on and off switch. Unfortunately, you would have to unplug and replug the DC jack for a reset of the KVM switch. Now let's jump straight into setting this up for the very first time and showcase the KVM switch main feature. We will start off with PC1, HDMI1 and HDMI2. I think I mentioned before that we have to use the HDMI cables that came supplied with the package from Pulltop because these are the HDMI that actually feeds data from the PC to the KVM switch and your regular HDMI cables will be from the KVM switch to the monitors. So very quickly let's start off assembling every single thing. Hopefully you guys can see in details setting this up for the first time. So first off we will plug in the power supply here so once powered on the switch button right here will be turned on like such and if you actually press the button it switches to pc2 but we don't have anything on so yeah this indication that the power is on all right so first things first you will see that this is actually the cable that came included in the package that is labeled like such you want to plug in the very first cable that is into pc1 Okay, so we have one into PC1 and the second cable, which is also an EDID cable, basically labeled with this thing right here. Plug this into. Yeah. So the KVM switch actually takes in two HDMI signals from the laptop and you have to figure out how you're going to output two video sources on your laptop because most laptops come with either a DP port or a HDMI port and probably a USB-C. So I'll be showing that in just a second. So we will also set up our very first monitor which is to this ultra wide monitor right here. And that should be connected to this cable here the other hdmi cable that i'll be using this with another monitor which is a small off-camera monitor for cameras i'll be plugging this into the hdmi in right here later so the other hdmi goes up here so two hdmi EDD cables basically routes this to your laptop and the other two hdmi cable one is to monitor one and monitor two all right, then we also have the PC ones, a USB A to USB C. We will be needing to plug this in. So PC ones data cable USB C to USB A. Let's plug this in. The last cable that we need is PC twos single USB-C cable right here which is absolutely amazing. You put this into the two host port on PC2 in and this one cable will take in every single thing on the KVM switch transferred through this one single USB-C cable which is insane. So as you can see this is what it looks like towards the end. You have a very clean all the ports are towards the back and let's place this down. This is my second monitor that I've been talking about just now. So this is the HDMI to the second monitor that I'll be using it right here. So now two monitors one is the LG 29 WK600 monitor, ultra wide monitor, and one is the off camera monitor, just to show you guys a simpler breakdown of the setup. The last two thing is USB dongles for your keyboard and mouse. So this one goes right in front here, as well as your keyboard right here. And then I will also be including a camera module, which is a Fantac webcam, uh, just to see whether if data is properly transferred over through the KVM switch onto the laptops connected. So we're gonna plug this in directly in front of the type a port back very very clean so now let's introduce the laptop of choice i'll be using a dell laptop right here as well as a bio laptop both capable of outputting up to three displays including the laptop screen the kvm switch will be in charge of displaying two monitors as well as one screen from the laptop itself so pc1 will be on the left hand side as well as pc2 so as mentioned earlier pc1 usually on laptops you only have one hdmi port and for me you have like a vga port that you can actually use as well so pc1 needs to output two separate video output to the kvm switch in order to get a dual display because you can't split through a single HDMI port so that's what you need to be aware of. So what I'll be using here is a USB-C to HDMI dongle that will help with getting an HDMI out from the laptop into the KVM switch. So that's what we'll be using right here. And so the EDID side, let's plug in our very first EDID cable. So this is for the HDMI right here. The second HDMI will be using this with the USB-C 
dongle that I was using just now. So now both EDIDs are actually in place. We will plug in the USB-A that is connected to the KVM switch for PC1 for any USB devices connected to the KVM switch. So this section is pretty much done on PC1. You have dual HDMI, one via the native HDMI port and one via the USB-C to HDMI converter. Then we have the USB-A to USB-C that is for the KVM switch. So PC1 is done. Now PC2 is even simpler all using one USB-C cable right here. Let's plug this into the Thunderbolt 4 port on the Dell laptop. Now a good thing to know is if you are charging the laptop, you would need another USB-C cable running through the back of the KVM for the 100 watts charging capability or will be supplied through this one cable. So we will bring in our mouse and keyboard just for the sake of comparison. Okay, let's unlock the PC. All right, so as you can see, we have triple monitor displaying right here. We have one, two, and three. So the field world is also showing the entire thing. So I want to show that the mouth is working fine right here. Let's try the camera, which should work as well. So this is actually pointing up right here. So uh, yeah, the camera works fine and the keyboard as well. First display on the laptop itself, moving on to the second monitor and the third monitor. As you can see the laptop on the right right here. All right, let's just switch this over to PC1 right here. We should get triple display as well on the laptop from the left. So you can see the continuity. This is a screen on the laptop one. You can see this moving at the corner of the screen. You know, you move it up to right here and onto this monitor right here. So that is pretty much the KVM switch in general. Let me just show you guys another POV back and forth. So now we have triple display one, two, and three. It actually appears correctly on the display settings right here. We click the switch and button. We switch over to right here, which is already ready to get all three monitors one, two, and three. Is that the laptop on the right? So the camera, the webcam should work right here through the USB data that we are seeing right now. Let's do a quick swap, showing us the camera. So this is from the laptop itself and one that is pointing towards the camera, which is the one right here. However, for my setup that uses Mac and Windows cross operating system and different aspect ratio monitor, where my first monitor is a 27 inch 4K monitor from Innocent called the 27C1UD with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. And the second monitor that is 29 inch ultra wide monitor from LG called the LG 29WK600 monitor with an aspect ratio of 21 by 9. With the desktop being PC1 and Mac PC2, here is what it looks like running them when in PC1. One, the desktop displays two video outputs on both the monitors. However, you will notice that the display outputted on the LG Ultra Wide monitor seems to have been squeezed with added black borders on both sides. When checking through the display settings, both monitors are able to output up to 4K resolution. However, it does not seem that we can get the ultra wide resolution displaying correctly. When selecting PC2, which is connected to the Mac, it takes a couple of seconds for the Mac to show both the displays. And as you can see, this is the catch when you using a Mac machine. You see the displays on both monitors is actually mirrored and there is actually no way to change it to an extended mode because this is how the display protocol works on Mac. It seems like Mac OS has the tendency of allowing only SST which is single stream transfer where it only displays one output where all the other displays can be only mirrored as shown here. Windows on the other hand have MST, which is multi-stream transfer, which allows display to be individual video source and it can be extended up to as many connections as the interface can handle. And I also happen to encounter with some compatibility issues with the Innocent 4K monitor with weird glitching like such when using this combination. So just thought to let you guys know. So all in all, be sure to look out for these two things, aspect ratio of your monitors, as well as the operating system that supports dual monitor displays to able to use the full feature of this KPM switch. Overall, if you need a bunch of USB ports connected to the KPM switch, this switch from Potop does the job perfectly fine. It is split up to dual 4K monitors at 60Hz, so for gaming purposes, this might not be for you. But for casual productivity, day-to-day -day use swapping between two machines back and forth has saved up a lot of my time. Usually, it will take a couple of key presses and up to 5-6 to six seconds to manually switch the input source on the monitor but with a single click on the KVM switch it switches pretty fast as you can see right here truly a game changer if you constantly swap between different machines. That being said, if you are interested, Pulltop will be releasing this KVM switch with its product code BD215F 
sometime next month in December. So be sure to check out their website for the launch. And with the information that I gathered, this KVM Switch will be priced at around 239 US dollars. And you can get it on Amazon, which will also be having a $50 discount during launch on the 10th of December. I'll be sure to leave some links in the description box down below or in the pinned comments for your ease of reference. So be sure to check them out. A huge shout out to Pulltop for sending over this unit for this review. And if you ever need any docking station or hubs, feel free to check out Pulltop's website as they have a bunch of interesting accessories, which will also be linked down below. And that's it from me. I hope you guys have found this video insightful. As always, if you have any questions or things that you want me to test out, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. That being said, thank you all so, so much for tuning in. My name is Ken and I'll catch you all in the next one. Stay safe, peace out, and bye-bye.